Welcome to Shape and Explore. My name is Ryan Pfeiffer, and today we're going to be making this DIY standing floor lamp using reclaimed bricks. Let's get started. My home city of Toronto is home to many beaches, some of which feature construction debris such as bricks and concrete to help mitigate shoreline erosion. These bricks have eroded over time, creating unique organic forms. I wanted to somehow incorporate these bricks into a project, and was struck by inspiration when I saw small bricks stacked on a piece of rebar. I thought this technique would be perfect for creating the base of a standing lamp. I came back to the beach with a section of 3 quarter inch conduit, and began searching to see which bricks would fit over the conduit. Some bricks were too large, some bricks were too small, and some bricks were just right. I collected some more bricks, then headed back to my studio. I used the small section of conduit to start playing around with stacking configurations for the base of the lamp. I wanted the bricks to have a haphazard feel to them, like they were organically stacked. I labeled each brick to maintain their orientation, then planned out how the lamp cord would come through the base. I wanted the lamp cord to be recessed in the base, so I traced out some lines leading from the exit hole to the edge of the brick. Then I used my angle grinder with a masonry wheel to cut out the recess. After that, I went in with some steel wool to clear off any loose debris from the bricks. To attach the bricks, I wanted to try PL Fast Grab. It sets up very quickly and was perfect for holding the bricks in their desired orientation. And I made sure to use a small piece of conduit to maintain alignment as I stacked all of the bricks. While the adhesive cured, I trimmed down a small strip of plywood to form the arm of the lamp. Then I marked out positions for holes where the conduit and cord would pass through the wood. I thought it would be cool to create a weaving pattern where the cord passes through the top and bottom of the wooden arm. To make holes for the lamp cord, I'd be using a 3 8 inch bit, and for the conduit I used a 15 16 inch bit. I used my drill press to make all of the holes, but a hand drill would work fine as well. Then I used a film canister to trace out a curve on both ends of the arm. I then used my disc sander to round out both ends of the wooden arm. I also sanded the arm down to 220 grit using my palm sander. Then I finished the wood with Minwax Polycrylic in clear satin. I chose to use a low gloss finish so there'd be less glare from the light of the lamp bulb. While that dried, I measured out the height of the lamp. The average height of a floor lamp is typically between 58 inches and 64 inches. I chose to split the difference with a height of 61 inches. I then used a pipe cutter to trim the conduit to its final length. I used some sandpaper to clean up the sharp edges, then polished up the conduit with some steel wool. And I finished off the conduit with a few light layers of anti-rust clear coat. And while I was at it, I used some all-purpose clear coat to seal the brick base. Once everything had dried, I could start assembling the upper portion of the lamp. I thought about keeping the lamp arm flush on the top, but decided to add some visual interest by lowering the arm so the conduit protruded from the top. I mixed up some two-part epoxy and applied it sparingly to the conduit. With the arm in place, I taped on a framing square to help hold it at 90 degrees. Off camera, I made some makeshift brackets to help me support the conduit as I installed it into the brick base. I applied some more PL to the bottom of the conduit, being sure to spread it thoroughly before inserting the conduit into the brick base. I then used some clamps to secure the conduit to the brackets that I made. This would help hold it at 90 degrees while it cured. After letting the lamp cure and taking a step back, I really wasn't satisfied with how plain the center of the lamp was. After going back to the drawing board, I thought that I could add more visual impact to the base by adding more bricks. I liked this new idea, but because I had already epoxied everything together, this meant that I would need to cut the existing conduit. I was unsure how this project would move forward, but luckily I was able to find a small piece of pipe that was just wide enough to slide over the existing conduit. This would allow me to easily repair any cut that I made to the lamp. I marked off the center of the bridge piece, then carefully cut the conduit in half. I mixed up some two-part epoxy and applied it to the bottom half of the conduit before installing the new bridge. And I added some tape to hold everything in place while it cured. 
Then I repeated the same process as before, spreading layers of PL in between each layer of new brick. And I was conveniently able to hide the new bridge piece underneath the layers of all the new brick. After adding so many new bricks, the base was pretty top heavy, so I thought it was best to add some supports at the bottom. I used more PL to attach two additional bricks on the bottom, and clamped them up overnight to cure. Then I used some more epoxy to reattach the top of the conduit to the base, making sure that everything was aligned in the end. With everything cured, I could then install the lamp cord. I started by threading the cord up through the base of the lamp, and pulled it out through the top of the conduit. Then I wove the conduit up and down through the holes that I drilled before, and I'm really happy with the result of this woven look. It takes some fine tuning to get the curves just right, but in the end, I think it's worth it. With everything threaded, I could reinstall the socket on the end of the cord. I finished off by installing an oversized bulb for my Kia, and the lamp was done. I had a lot of fun on this project getting out of the studio and experimenting with material that I typically wouldn't work with. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up below and feel free to leave any questions or comments there as well. I'd love to know what you thought of this piece. Also, if you want to stay updated with everything that I'm doing, follow me on Instagram, that's at shape and explore. And if this is your first time with my channel, I'd like to say welcome and also consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time on Shape and Explore.